This is the second part of creating a 2D Unity game utilizing the data-oriented technology stack. We'll be creating an enemy spawn with some enemies, I will show you how to use scriptable objects with dots, how to use physics, and lastly how to make a simple AI. And because you want to be able to easily add and modify our enemies, I will create scriptable object for them. This scriptable object is just containing some information that each of our enemies will have, such as the level when the enemy will start spawning, some prefab for the enemy, the maximum health, some damage, and the movement speed. You can obviously add any other variables you would want. We'll also need to store all of these scriptable objects of the enemy somewhere, so I will create a component for that. When defining the component that will be holding all of the enemy scriptable objects, you may notice that I'm not using a struct, instead I'm using a class. And this is because inside of the component, we need to be holding a list of all of the enemy scriptable objects, so it has to be a class, but don't worry, we'll also be able to add this component to other entities. And so that I don't have to be storing a list of all of these classes, these scriptable objects, instead I will make a struct that will be containing the same information. So now this struct, enemy data, is containing the same information as the enemy scriptable object class, but the only difference is that it is not a class, instead it is a struct. So I had to change the game object to entity, because the game object is only thing that is a class in this enemy scriptable object. And then I'm creating the list not containing the scriptable object, instead enemy datas. I will also create enemy spawner component so that we can store some more data about the spawner there. Here I'm just storing the spawn cooldown. Next, we'll make a enemy spawner altering script so that we can assign all of the values that we want the enemy spawner to be holding in the inspector, including our scriptable objects. In the enemy spawner altering script, we want to be able to set the spawn cooldown as well as all of the scriptable objects for the enemies. Then in the Baker class, I'm just adding the enemy spawn component and setting the spawn cooldown. Then I'm creating a list of enemy datas, which is the struct that we have defined here. And I'm doing that so that we can convert list of these scriptable objects into list of enemy datas, which are just structs. So in the for each loop, I'm going through all of the items that I have in the list. And I'm just assigning the same values to the new enemy data that we are creating it. The only different value here is for the prefab, so we need to use the getEntity function. And then, instead of using just addComponent, we need to use addComponentObject, because this component is not a struct, but it is a class. And the rest is still the same. So we can go back to Unity and try creating some of these scriptable objects. So right-click, create, we have the folder, scriptable objects, and we have the enemy scriptable object. In our subscene, I will create new empty game object to which I will add the enemy spawner altering script. And in here, we are able to set the spawn cooldown and add as many enemy scriptable objects we want. And as we play a game and select the enemy spawner in the inspector, we can see that it is containing the enemy spawner component just with the spawn cooldown, and it is also containing a class, the enemy data container, which is holding these scriptable objects even though now they are not really scriptable objects because we have converted them into a struct. And now we can get to the more fun part, which is actually spawning the enemies, so I will create new script enemy spawner system for that. The enemy spawner system is inheriting from system base because later we will most likely need to work with classes. I have also defined few variables, and in update I am trying to get singleton entity with the component enemy spawner component, which if we get it, I'm setting it into a variable, and if we get none, I'm just returning from the function. Then, from the enemy spawner entity, I'm getting the enemy spawner component, as well as the enemy data container. And then I just have a simple timer, so if the elapsed time is greater than the next spawn time, for which I have a variable, then we can spawn the enemy, and when we spawn it, we will just instantiate it, and set the next spawn time to the current time plus the spawn cooldown. Next, in the spawn enemy function, I will just go through all of the scriptable objects that we have assigned to the list and check if their level is less than the current level that we are in, because when we are in the first level, we probably don't want to be spawning some boss. 
in a variable, I'm storing the current level that we are now in. I also have created a new list of enemy datas that is containing all of the enemies that we can spawn. In the for each loop, I'm going through all of the enemies that are in the enemy data container component and I'm checking if their level is less or equal to the current level that we are now in. If this is true, it means that we can spawn the enemy. Then I have an index that we will later make random. And then I am just instantiating new enemy using the entity manager and I'm getting the enemy from the available enemies on the random index. And then I'm just setting the local transform component of the entity because later we'll also want to make the position random. Now we can make prefab for all of our enemies and assign them to these scriptable objects. And for my enemies I'm using this 2D skeleton isometric pixel art character pack from Unity Asset Store. My prefab for the enemy is really simple, it is just an empty object under which I have the sprite. And if you set all prefabs in your scriptable objects correctly, you will now see that we are spawning many enemies to the game. Next thing that we'll do is to make the position and the index of the enemy that will spawn random. To generate some random values in dots is a bit different and more complicated, the way that you do it is that you need to add using unity.mathematics and because there is another random class in using unity.engine you also want to say that the random class that you are using is the one from the mathematics library. Then in our class we need to define a variable of type random and we also need to initialize it with some random seed value so I'm doing this in the protected override void on create so I'm setting the random and I'm getting some value again from the random, but this is just the class random. I'm calling the function create from index and I'm passing in the hash code of the enemy spawner component, which should be just a random number every time. So as we have initialized our random variable, we can go back when we are spawning the enemies and you can see that I'm setting the index to some random value using the variable random. I'm calling the next integer function there are also functions like next float2, next float3, and so on. And I'm just telling it that the maximum number that it can go to is the count of the available enemies. Then I have created a function that will get us position that is outside of the camera range. So first I'm just defining some float3 for the position and I'm doing random that next float2 and I'm telling it the minimum and maximum for the values that it can generate. The minimum is the camera size multiplied by 2 because I don't want it to be starting exactly at the size of the camera but a bit behind so that the player can't see the enemies. And you can see that we are getting some errors here because I just haven't defined the camera size yet but we will do that soon. And then I'm checking if the position that we have generated is in the camera range and if this is true we can just generate new random position. So we are just generating random positions in the range that is twice as big as the camera till we get a value that is not in the camera range. When we find the valid position where we can spawn an enemy, I'm also adding the camera position to it because as we are moving with the camera, we want to make sure that the spawn position is also changing. Now I will just define a variable for the camera size in the enemy spawner component. And I will be setting this variable just through inspector because I expect that you won't be changing the size of the camera too often. Back in the enemy spawner system, when we are instantiating the enemy and setting its local transform, we can just set the position to get the position outside of camera range. And because I have added the camera size variable to the enemy spawner component, I will also implement it in the authoring script. So I have just added a variable for that and I'm setting it once I'm adding the enemy spawner component to it. I set my camera size to 11 and 6, now we can see how the spawning goes. So we can see that some enemies are being spawned in, but as the player I can't really see any of them. So let's take a look into the scene. And indeed we can see that all of the enemies are being spawned around the camera correctly. So they are not too close to the player, but also not too far from it. And so that we can actually do something with the enemies, let's add new enemy component to them. For now, the enemy component is just holding some current health. And because we have no classes defined in this struct, we can obviously make it just a struct. Then in the enemy spawner system, when I'm spawning the enemy, 
I'm also adding new components to it, which is the enemy component, and I'm taking the current health from the available enemies list on the index based on the enemy that we have chosen to spawn, and I'm accessing the max health from it. And we can see that as we are spawning the enemies, some of them have health just of 2, and some of them have also health of 5. Now let's create the enemy AI system script to make the enemy smooth and rotate towards player. The enemy AI system is really simple, it is inheriting from the AI system interface. I have defined a variable for the entity manager as well as for the player entity. In the onUpdate function, I'm getting the entity manager, getting the player, which is just a singleton entity. And then we have this for each loop that might seem new to you, but it is actually something that we have already done. For example, in the bullet system, when we are going through all of the entities and checking if they have the bullet component, then this is not really a user-friendly way to do it, it is kind of messy. So a better way that you can go through all of the entities and check for specific components looks like that. So I'm just defining which components I need and I'm giving some names to the variables. So the first variable will be named enemy component, the second variable will be named transform component, then I'm just saying in, I'm using the query from system.api which pretty much just has all entities and components in it. And I'm saying that I want to have all entities that have the enemy component and at the same time the local transform. I'm having the ref rw here because I then also want to be able to set some value to the local transform back. So this for each loop will just get us all entities that have the enemy component and the local transform at the same time and it will automatically save them into variables. So it will save the enemy component into the first variable and the transform component in the second variable. And then I'm just calculating the direction from the enemy to the player. So I'm getting the local transform of the player and subtracting the position from the enemy then I'm calculating the angle using the math.8 and 2 function. And to this, I'm just adding 90 degrees because when I was testing it, the enemies were not rotated correctly. Then I'm setting the rotation of the transform component, which is just the enemy. So I'm creating new float free and on the X, the rotation is zero. On Y, it is also zero. And on Z, it is the angle that we have calculated. So this part will make sure that all of the enemies are still looking at the player. Now the second line is just moving them, so I'm adding some position to the transform component. So I'm normalizing the direction to make sure that the enemies are not moving faster on diagonals and just multiply it by time that delta time. So now the enemies are starting to spawn. I still can't see any of them yet. Now they are getting closer to me. You can see they are rotating based on the player's position and they are still getting closer and closer to me. So we could add some kind of raycast checks that would subtract the player's health. And next thing that we will do is to actually make the bullets damage the enemies. To do that, we can just modify our existing scripts that we have made in the first part. So in the bullet component, I will add a variable for the size of the bullet so that we can later do the cast. And to make sure that we can use physics with dots, go to your package manager and download the Unity physics package. And if you are not familiar how to work with physics in dots, feel free to check my tutorial about it. As we have the Unity physics package installed, we can go into our bullet system that we have also made last time at using unity.physics. In the update function, I'm accessing the physics world singleton and then I'm creating new native list containing all of the hits. I'm using the sphere cast all function. I'm passing in the position of the bullet, the size of the bullet, Direction can be just float 3.0, max distance I have set it to 1, then I'm outputting all of these hits into the hits list, and I've also created new collision filter, where I'm setting the belongs to layer to the default layer, <coughs> which I have defined in the collision layer enum, and collides with I have set it to the enemy layer. Then we can go through all of the hits in our hits list, and I'm just setting all of these entities to inactive for now, because later we will be also implementing object pooling system. And lastly, don't forget to dispose the list. Also make sure that the numbers of the layers are corresponding to the layers that you have in your own project. And in Unity, don't forget to select your enemy and just set the layer to the enemy layer.
One last thing that we need to change in the script is to actually set the size of the bullet. So I will quickly go back to the player system and when we are adding the bullet components to the bullet that we have just instantiated, I will also set the size which for me is 0.2. And you also want to make sure that you have some kind of collider on your enemy, so I will add box collider. Even though we are in 2D, I will be adding the 3D version because I'm not sure if there is any physics package that works with 2D and dots. We can see that the enemies are moving closer to the player and when I try shooting, you can see that it is just setting these entities to inactive and it is all working. But this is just the beginning of our dots 2D project. In next parts, we will be adding some leveling system, object pooling system, some special abilities for the player and so much more. I hope this video was useful, if you have any questions or suggestions, drop them down to the comments, don't forget to like, subscribe and I will see you in next videos, bye! Thanks for watching this video till the end. If you are looking for a Unity, C Sharp or Bolt tutor, then I am here for you, so feel free to send me a message to my gmail and take a look at my website for more info. I can help you with your personal projects or teach you anything about game development you would want to know. You are welcome.